Hello there, my friends. Welcome back to Archon Fjorder. Today we're going to start off the episode over here. I think this is episode number eight. And um, we're back at the little aberration cave. I want to come in and I want to check for some more loot. On our way over, we ended up getting a couple of nice things to kill, including two sheep. Pick up uh, Artemis and we need to throw out our little raptor pack. So, Danny, Daniel, and then the Daniels. Make sure that these guys have... Oh, they do have some levels. Uh, I think let's pump up their health to be a little bit higher. And then the rest goes into melee. This is Daniel, not Danny, right? Yep. Almost had a minor heart attack. Like, if, if Danny's health was only that low, then we had a small problem here. Alright. Let's just make sure that they are all on neutral and then follow all. Let's head in. Let's see what we can find. Woo. Uh, lag. Cool. We've got all three of our raptors with us. Great. Um, we're going to start by going left. Because then it's a jump down instead of a climb up. And I don't think the Dinonychus can climb up without a rider. And I really don't feel like climbing all of them up. Oh, there are rock drakes in here? Since when are there rock drakes in here? I didn't know. There are two rock... Can you guys handle rock drakes? I mean, I brought the tech Rex. I should have brought Ben. Um... I mean, sure, let's see if we can fight Rock Drakes and Denonicus. I mean, Danny does a hell of a lot of damage with his pack boost. Come on, guys, let's, let's go get him. Whoa, okay. Just, let's just maul him, get rid of him, okay. Hey, Denonicus can fight um, Rock Drakes. Why were there rock drakes in here? There's also no loot drop. What? It's supposed to be right here. Again? Okay. Anyway, this is the drop down that I spoke about. And there's a crab. Hi, Mr. Karkonos25. Poop. We're just going to ignore you. You guys coming? Great stuff. Don't get stuck on anything. No, 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 no. Don't. What? What hit me? Okay. Let's see if the other drop is here. I don't have much hope for it. If the first one wasn't there... Okay, this one's here. What? And unguarded? I am so confused. This game confuses me sometimes. Okay. Uh, Look safe. Hop down. What do we got? <laughs> I'm never going to use those. But that's all right. Uh, whatever. It, it's stuff we can grind down. Well, I don't think you can grind down blueprints. Ravagers! Hi. Oh, yeah. Denonicus pack just shreds through those guys. Okay. So, single Denonicus sucks. Denonicus pack? Unstoppable. Hey, okay, so just leaving the cave and coming right back in and the yellow drop spawns without any of its guardians having spawned back in. What do we have here? Utaranus saddle and a... <gasps> That's amazing, a Thyla saddle blueprint. I will happily take that, thank you. Um, wow, two saddles and the Denonicus is encumbered. Two saddles and all the other crap we're carrying, probably. Don't need any of that. You guys still with me? Great. Okay. No great luck on this on the red drop having immediately respawned, but we did get one of each, so I'm happy. We can head back to base now. Oh yes! Welcome back. Uh, now official greeting. Hello. Start of episode here at base. Words. 
I've done some things in between episodes. I've been a busy, busy boy. I've tidied up a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Uh, you'll notice the four dung beetles are no longer here. That's because the eight crop plots we have in there are all currently full, and I have excess. You have a level. I have a lot of excess, so for the time being, I've put the dung beetles away, just in case, you know, I don't, I don't want them to die, to get bitten to stuff. Also, uh, the Denonicus were out. I had some eggs, made some more kibble. I have over a hundred uh, exceptional kibble, extraordinary kibble, the kibble in the fridge over there now, and also the Baryonyxes are currently away, except for Ben, who has been healing up gradually on his own since returning. Um, the Baryonyxes, let me show you real quick. We do now have these guys. Uh, so I did spend a little bit of time just getting these guys ready. We have a new perfect male, just decided I, I don't know what the other one was in terms of colors, so I I did a bunch of breeding, got about 30 or 40 eggs, um, hatchlings, out of that one male and female we ended last episode off with, and just decided from their brood, I'm going to pick a bunch that all have exactly the same colors. So we got this male that has kind of this white cream underbelly and this silver top stripe, which I like, and this green, gray, brown body. And then we have one... Two, three females that all have exactly the same color. So that is perfect. That is a very good starting stock should we choose to breed with the Baryonyxes at some point. Sorry, I'm a little paranoid being around here. Um, so that, that all happened. Also, we have a new sickle. Finally, I have a good sickle. I was using a standard stock primitive sickle up until now and it's been very very annoying and frustrating anyway wow caught up on a lot of things that have happened i've also been very busy gathering resources because today is a big episode um it it's uh it's a very lovely area we live in here it's pretty but unfortunately if one looks at the map we're very we're kind of off skewed to one end there's a Dillo. I don't like Dillos. Give me a second while I deal with a Dillo. As I was saying, if we look at the map, right, we're a bit far off to one end and very high up. Not great. Especially if we want to get to the Volcano Island. Uh, that's very, very far away. And... Artemis actually cannot make that flight in a single breath of stamina, uh, which really sucks. Artemis is a really good bird, and 2,000 stamina is a lot for an Argentavis. Uh, Fjordur is just a very big map. Anywho, um, additionally, that is a very big wide open edge. This is a very big wide open edge, and there's that whole cliff face up there. I've had so many raptors, dillos, trudons and things attack me in between episodes while I've just been gathering resources and doing the things. It's absolutely absurd. Uh, so, I'm tired of that. We need a base that is better defensible and where it's bigger. Um, I don't want to destroy the shack we have. I have fond memories of the shack. We've lived in the shack for seven episodes, well, six and a half episodes now. Kind of math is hard. Um, I don't want to destroy it. I want to keep it here as a memory. So instead, I think we are going to move somewhere else today. So let's go ahead. Before I do any crafting of things, I have a bunch of resources gathered for those purposes. Those. Uh, those purposes. Um, I want to go around and I want to show you guys a couple of the options I have that I've been considering for good base locations. The first of which really isn't that far from our current house. It's this little island over here, which is very well defensible. Um, I mean, nothing can get on here once I start building. I highly doubt much will be able to spawn once I start building because I want to build a fairly large base. Um, it's also pretty flat and should make 
you know, the construction of a little water pen for water tames and breeding and t mutating and stuff. Quite easy over here on this edge. We just need to fence off that side and that side. Um, so it's easily defensible. It's fairly large. It has a relatively flat surface area and has easy access to water. Those are all key uh, factors for me. And where we are is right here. So let's just turn. There's the map. Um, it's actually further in the wrong direction for me uh, in relation to where the volcano island is. I can also give you guys coordinates. There you go, just in case you wanted it. Uh, so this was an option, and I really like this. It's really pretty and scenic, but I don't think I'm going to be building here. Option number two is this patch of land over here, and we're actually now on Vardaland. The island over there behind us is Vanaland, the northern island. Vardaland is the southwestern island, and it's around here. Um, I really like this place. Vardaland is a beautiful island to be on. It's just very far away. Most of the time I find myself wanting to be on Vanaland to tame things and find things. Um, and Vardaland just seems like it's excessively far, especially while we only have an RG to fly around with at the moment. But this patch of land here is relatively flat as well. It only has one entrance, although it is a relatively wide one that would need to be walled off probably. Um, but it also has easy access to water. All really good things. Uh, I just think Vardaland as an island is very far from everything else. And unfortunately, that means I don't really want to build on it at the moment. Here we are coming up on option number three, which honestly is the most beautiful base location on Fjordr, in my opinion. And that's this little gold encrusted highland elevated plateau mountain thing. It is really big really flat and only has this one access point this one little bridge perfect for defense and it is so pretty if this would honestly have been my favorite option for a base location if there were any sources of water nearby there isn't even a little spring or well or anything on this thing for water nothing that it you'll just constantly be flying i think the closest source of water is that waterfall down there or the ocean which is an absurd distance to lay pipes so that's not happening unfortunately also it is over here and there are the coordinates. Very well positioned, very central, just no water. And that's a problem. The fourth, final, and penultimate base location requires of us to break away from the mainland and fly on over to this pair of islands over here. This is, I think, where I'm going to be building my long-term Fjordr base. It is very big, lots of room to expand and do extensive breeding operations and things. And I think I like it here. It is right there. Give you guys some coordinates. There you go. Uh, and I think this is probably the best positioned of the lot in terms of proximity to Vardaland, to, I forget its name, but the Volcano Island and to Vanland to the north. Um, and this is, I'm pretty sure, where I would like to build today. So now we get to, well, land and just regain some stamina so we can make a good attempt at getting back home. And then once our stamina has regenerated, we've got the long flight back to our current base. It's going to be a long day ferrying things back and forth. Artemis just made it in terms of stamina. That, that really is a long flight. But, okay, we're back now. So I think what I'm going to do, my plan of action in terms of how I'm going to approach this, is I'm going to make up a bunch of foundations. I've got a lot of material. I've got a lot of fiber, a ton of stone thatch. 
I might need to get more wood. Um, I'm going to make up a bunch of different foundations first, and then we're going to go back over there, clear out an area, and kind of put down the plan, the layout that we want before we start building up any walls. And um, fun fact, if you eat, I think it's focal chili, before you start crafting, it lasts for 15 minutes, but it increases your crafting speed by a fairly small amount. But if you're making a hundred things, that small amount stacks up really quickly and it makes quite a big difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and see, yep, everything I need to make 10 of those. Not too long ago, oh, there, words. Not too much later, I now have a very heavy Argentavis with a bunch of stuff in its inventory. I actually made more, but um, if I throw all of that on there, I'm not convinced that this RG is going to fly once I hop on. Yeah, no. So that's too much for it. Uh, I did not want to pick that up. That is garbage. So instead, I think I'm just going to take that much off of it and leave this here for the time being. Uh, we can dump it in here. That's okay. That can go there. Do I have any doors? I actually forgot about doors. Uh, yes, that's exactly what I want. And now if we hop on the bird, can it fly? It is slow. Dang it, I might need to drop something else. I have a plan B! We have backup birds. That can go... Ooh, you have some levels. Let's get your health up to 10k. Uh... We have backup birds, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw all of this extra stuff onto a backup bird for now. And we're just going to say, you, madam, follow Artemis. And then we begin the really long flight. I feel like I'm still a little slow. Oh, well, here we go. I have been hard at work, my friends. It's been a very long time since I last saw you. And I've come back to a travesty. An absolute travesty. I wish my character would stop looking around, but I think it is just as shocked as I am. We've been robbed. Everything is gone, empty. They even took everything out of the... F oh, no, they didn't. Hello? It's just that one. Well, I might as well take that out of that furnace smelter thingamajigamuff. Wow. They even took the fuel. The fuel, it is gone. It is no longer in the generator. Can you believe it? It's actually in all of my birds. Yep. Uh, I have emptied everything. All of the valuables are in here. All of my structures and my good dinos are in here. Picked all of those stuff up. S plus allows you to do that. Uh, those four birds all have a variety of things in them. So we have looted pretty much everything. I don't think I'm going to take these. There's no point in stealing them. Um, I made enough generators that we don't need this one. And I'd like to leave the bed here. Just so that this is still a spawnable area for me. A respawn area. A safe-ish one. And in here, I am leaving one backup bird. Just one. For whenever shit hits the fan, you know? The, an oh shit bird. Whoop. No, not in there. So now we can come ahead and hop onto here. And nothing else is around here, so I can just say follow all. And then, we should now, with five birds on our tail, be able to just fly all the way back to our island. And our train of RGs is coming in. I think the weight variation is what's causing some of them to lag behind. But here we go. I can show you guys what I've been doing. And it's big. There's a lot of it. Basically, the center part that we have built with the four gates in is the base. That is where all of my structures are going to go. That's where all of my storage is going to be. These two wings on the sides, yeah, they are for breeding and exclusively for breeding. Nice and big, a 16 by 16 foundation square, and I kind of like it. This is not the end. 
of the base. I mean, I still have to build all of this up. And now that I'm back and I have all of these structures with me, I can put them in place and then... Okay, you guys can all just stop and figure out where you want to land. Please. Land. Go. Thank you! Good birds. Anyway... Yeah, so I really like this. Uh, on one side of the island, yes, this island, the ground kind of picked up quite a bit. So if I run up here a little bit towards the back, you can kind of see the grass clipping through right here. So that meant I had to raise this platform up higher. Uh, the other platform could actually have been on the same level as the main structure here at the bottom. But I really like this the idea of the symmetry. So I just raised it up to be the same, really, to be the same overall height as what we have on the other side. And I think that'll look really good. I, I think that it was the right decision for me to make. Also, um, yeah, my stamina is going down really fast. I ended up making a mind wipe potion just so I could get more weight for this building process because I ended up running around with a lot of structures and things on in my inventory. What is... Excuse you, ma'am, but you are interrupting the shot. Ooh-wee, that took a while, but we now have the other five birds put away, and just Artemis is out. And the only things in his inventory are basically my inventory stuff, the things that I like to have on me. But, um, yeah, we have some stuff placed in. This is how generally how I like to arrange my bases. Doesn't really matter what shape they take, but I like to have my uh, industrial forge thing, words, in the middle because it is by far the biggest structure that you ever need to build. Um, so everything else always gets arranged around that kind of symmetrically. Words. Sym symmetric. I'm going to stop trying to say that now. Um, above me now, that's kind of a little cooking area. Over there, we have our main crafting area, chemistry bench, um, things, grinder, stuff. And then above where that trike is currently intervening, you better not poop on my bed, sir, is where my bedroom is, hidden behind these, um, I think it's 14 of these little S plus crafting stations. And I just use them as storage because they have a ton of storage space in them. We've got uh, the dinos I'm never going to use. You, basically the ones I tame in order to breed. And then at the bottom are the good ones that I are, am going to use, are going to use. Ooh, that's my crotch. I want to look at my face. There we go. I'm good at words today. Um, so good dinos, bad dinos. Then we have saddles and saddle blueprints, armor and armor blueprints, blah, 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 blueprints, tools and tool blueprints. This is currently not allocated, although I'm keeping all of my fertilizer in here until I have a new greenhouse area. Um, crafted things, and then these are my trophies, drops, um, apex drops things. Still don't know which of those I'm actually going to need for this map, for these bosses, but it's over there. You know, just in case I need it. But currently at this time, all of my resources, I'm just keeping in my smithy and or in my um, fabricator, because this is where I do all the crafting usually. This is where all the resources will be, will be needed most. Um, and before I can keep building, I am going to need more stone. Definitely more stone. So probably going to need to do that. But, but, this is something I'm very excited for. Uh, always one of my favorite parts about getting into the later game of Ark, um, or I guess we're kind of in the mid game now, is building up an industrial grinder. Because by the time you can afford to build one of these things, you've probably got tons of really crappy loot so in here currently all of the saddles i either have better variants of or for dinosaurs that i'm probably never going to tame like a beelzebufo and i know they can be useful but eh 
Um, all of the really crappy crossbows, I have better crossbows that I'm saving, but actually I'm using long necks at this point, so eh, again. Uh, duplicates of armor, of all the tools, and things I'm just overusing that I'm never going to use again. And it's the most exciting to hit this grind all button for the very first time. And to see the absolute ridiculous amount of resources you get out of that. Usually so much metal. That's in an insane amount of metal. Really, that's brilliant. And one piece of stone. I was really hoping for more than just one piece of stone. Oh well. Alright, I've done a little bit of work. So let me show you guys what we've got. It's starting to look kind of like a something. What we have on either side at this point are just the 16 by 16 square platforms with four high walls. So they're the S plus large walls, although I do believe vanilla has large walls as well. W-A-L-L. -L. Uh... Yeah, four normal walls. So that's the same thing I used. I just used the S plus version and then I put uh, pillars in all the corners just to make them look a little bit nicer. Not quite as boring and bland. And then I've done up the walkways a little bit. We've got pillars here and there. Combination of the stone and the wood pillars and then railings, which I really like. I think that works very nicely. Uh, but there's still a whole lot that we need to do. Um, obviously, I don't have a roof over my head just yet, and that is a very important part. One thing, though, um, I'm going through a lot of resources making this, this base. I haven't even started with the main structure yet, and I've had to go on so many resource runs so far. So, I think it's time to update our... Utility Dino Arsenal. Just a little bit. So far I've been using the Stego to gather wood and thatch and things like that. I think I'm tired of that because my RG cannot pick up my Stego so the weight reduction on wood is kind of pointless and I don't think an RG reduces weight nearly as much as a Stego or a Mammoth or a Beaver would. So we need a new wood gatherer and I don't mind that because a, the one I have in mind is also a lot faster. It moves quicker, so it'll be better to get around with uh, moving from tree to tree. Uh, and it has a really good, I think it only, its weight for wood is 25% of the actual weight. So um, yeah, it does involve coming to the Volcano Island and hopefully I don't anger a wyvern, although Artemis can probably handle one or two wyvern wyverns at a time. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and have a look. I'd like a high level one, I think. And I found a high level one and most of you probably already know what I'm, I've been looking for. But just in case you haven't, let's see. There it is, Thorny Dragons. You know, the sandy beavers, the desert desert beavers? I really like these guys. They are super cool, and we found this 130 male. It looks like it still has some summer bash colors on it. Um, I actually don't know how long that event is going to last, but anyway. Let's go ahead and grab it. I really dig this blue, and that's, that's a kind of a teal, turquoisey body. Ow, okay, you can stop doing that now. Kind of have to fly up at a 45-ish degree to make sure that they can't hit you. Really annoying, but I'm going to take it back to base. And we're just going to drop it in one of our breeding boxes, breeding pens for now. And use that as a temporary taming pen. And we can just fly on over here and drop it in there. And I've actually already got one in here. I found a female not too long ago, not too long before the male, and uh, she's also a 130. So we now have a 130 female and a 130 male. I think I like the female's colors more, but you know what? That's all right. So now we can come down here real quick, land, hop out, and grab a couple of these shocking trank darts 
that we got ourselves in the last episode. I've temporarily put a little platform up here just so that I can stand here and trank them. This is not a permanent part of the taming pen. Um, I'm gonna... It's not gonna be fun if I fall in there with them. So let's just try and realign. There we go. Like so, do not fall... Okay, great stuff. So now... We can go ahead and try and knock these suckers out. I really don't want that stupid turkey to get in the way. Oh, that's gonna hurt. And it's down. Happy days. Do we need... Yeah, might as well leave Gamma up. It's turning to night now. Okay, we've got both of them unconscious. That's really cool. That's a good thing. You can already tell the female has higher health at the moment. But those are pre-tamed stats, so they don't really matter as much. But let's come back down here. And the rest of those shocking trank darts can go straight back into the fridge before they spoil. And we can grab out some kibble. Unfortunately, in order to make their saddle... I need clay. Now, clay is a lot harder to get on this map than most of the other maps because there is no desert. There is no place where you can go and get a whole lot of cactus sap. Um, where There's clay. So you need cactus sap and you need sand. Neither of which are extremely easy to get on this map. Uh, I think a dodic is actually the preferred dino to collect sand so let's see gonna have to get used to the new base layout that's the wrong one uh let's grab out the dodic let's grab artemis and let's go see if we can find some cactus sap and some sand to make up two saddles for these lovely little dragons so the only place on fjorder that you can really get cactus sap as far as i know i could be wrong is back on the volcano island. Kind of makes sense, this is where you get the thorny dragons, so a prime ingredient for taming them, likely also here. And you get these really dark cactuses as well. Now I think yeah, that gives quite a bit of cactus sap. Does this give more? No. This definitely gives more. So a hatchet on these dark burnt cactuses uh, gets you a decent amount of the cactus sap. Um, just be careful when you land around here. It is super dangerous just walking around on foot. I don't know if that will be quite enough. So let's see if we can find another cactus or two to just chop up. As for sand, yeah, I thought I saw this. You can just come basically to any beach area. I've seen them on the northern island as well, all along the beach. And you can just gather it there. Let's see, does the dodic gather sand? That would be a negative. I could have sworn it does. Maybe it's the Anki. But you can also just walk up to it and gather it by hand. I don't think we need a ton, so... Let's see how much we can get from this. Can you use a tool? You can not. Okay, so this looks like it's just a hand gather. Uh, that really wasn't a lot. Okay, we can now go ahead and throw that onto you. Let's just pick you up. And where's your little friend? This onto her. Excellent. Okay, so these guys, you really don't need an imprinted one. They're like any kind of any other utility tame. Probably never gonna get used for fighting. Um, but I really like thorny dragons. I mean, they're, they look really cool. And I think I might as well get myself an imprinted one. This one has okay weight. This one has the better health. Uh, yeah, neither of them are particularly great. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and breed these two together. And whatever comes out is going to be our little baby. Our imprinted thorny dragon that we can use to gather up wood. And we have our imprinted one. Um... Very similar to the mother in terms of colors. It got a little bit of that greeny teal body-esque, I think, that the father had. 
Uh, but it got the red top, uh, orangey bottom. Although I see now that it has a white belly. That's kind of cool. Um, anyway, it came out with the mother's weight and the mother's melee and the father's health. So the, the father's health was the higher one. So this is with the good stats. Uh, I ended up breeding up a couple. So here you can see all of the babies. I think I got six babies in the end. And this one was the nicest looking of them. I did not choose him for his stats, but he does have all of the good stats. And I've named him Needles. Just to compare what imprinting does for them. The mother has uh, 486 weight and 351 melee. This guy has 680 weight and 480 melee. Much better than the mother. So I think it, it might be worth imprinting them every now and then. Um, plus it's a carnivore. Really good if you want to heal them quickly. You can just force feed them meat. Let's see. I want to get its health up a little bit more than that. Maybe to like 5k. And then the rest will just pump weight. Oh yeah. So much nicer gathering wood with this guy. Not only can I pick him up with an RG. But they're also quite fast just running around. He might not necessarily be able to carry as much, although I actually think that is more wood than the Stego can carry at any one point in time. It probably is. Ste I did say Stego, right? I think I said Stego. Just grab... Actually, this is the wrong place. Wood goes in here. There we go, and with a little bit of resources back... What this... My mouse just was weird. Um, with a little bit of resources back, I think we can now go ahead and keep building. And, of course, just as I want to start recording, it gets dark in nighttime, and I'm not keen for waiting until day to show you, because I may or may not have gotten a little carried away. Uh, I don't know whether or not I should be ashamed with this, but we have a base. We have a beautiful base. I really like it. The pens on the side are very simple, but they are fully functional, according to what I need them to be. We have a generator, a whole bunch of aircons, and a whole bunch of these soul terminals, one of which is set to pick up newborns. Uh, and I've got that set up in both, and they are very purposefully out of one another's reach, so that I can breed freely in that one and in this one, and those soul terminals will only collect the eggs or the babies in that pen and not in the other. So I can keep organized while I breed. Also, um, yes, we have a base, a building, a lovely building. I'm very happy with it. Uh, it came out beautifully and I kind of like the glow that we have. I mean, that was completely accidental. I was not planning for it. And I'm very glad I was able to keep some of the trees around it. But here we go. Let's go ahead. And most of my dinos can fit in here. Wow, that is bright. Let's gamma down. That is still very bright. These lamps are very effective. Anyway, here we are on the inside. You all saw the layout primarily, right? We've got this as our core feature. All of our crafting stations. All of our food production stations. These guys are hard at work again. Uh, I have a bed now and we've named the place, I believe. Yeah, Tri Island. Mm -hmm. And then there's two sets of stairs. Based, well, one set of stairs uh, that goes up to the roof level. And this I'm very happy about. Because we have an absolutely ginormous farming section. Right, we've got four crop plots with narco berries in them. We've got eight crop plots with long grass, eight with savo root, two with citronel, and two with rock carrots. Now, you definitely do not need this much crops. Or this many, this so much, that. You don't need so much, ever. Uh, I just had the room and the math worked out quite nicely, so this is what I went with. And we've got the very big, nice, ornate um, greenhouse on top that looks very royal and fancy from the outside. I'm very happy with it. Yeah. 
These pillars kind of came about after the staircase was put in. The staircase was floating and it needed something. So I gave it some pillars and then decided, well, the rest of the building could use the pillars as well. And I really, really like the way that looks. Also, we can probably turn this guy off. Yeah, it's done doing its thing. And it's already daytime again. My nighttime cycle is very short on this game. There we go. Um, let's head back out. Did the lamps just turn off? Because it seems like it got a lot darker all of a sudden. Anyway, I really like this. I think this looks brilliant. And definitely worthy of a long-term base. Lots of work to be done here. And lots of room to expand, surprisingly, around here. I'm happy. I like it. Anywho, my friends, I think that's probably where we're going to end the episode. Uh, this was a lot. A lot of building happened in today's episode. We even did a little bit of taming, and I'm very happy with needles. Uh, great, great little utility tame. Yeah. I look forward to seeing what we can do in this place now in the coming episodes. My friends, if you've enjoyed this episode, please, please, please leave me a like, a comment, any comment, a smiley face. It really does help me out. And, my friends, I hope you have enjoyed it. I really do. Until next time, have an absolutely brilliant one, my friends.